Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming over here to see me. My name is Lorenzo Petito. I'm the chairman and CEO of the UFC. And uh, me and Dana and uh, Marshall Zalesny are here to talk about the launch of our new digital product, UFC Fight Pass. Um, as many of you know, who are familiar with the UFC, we have been very focused on growing this brand and creating a, a global uh, combat sport are, are bringing our events all over the world. Um, since we bought the company, we've done 38 events in what we call international markets. That's outside of North America. Um, all of those events have been incredibly successful. Uh, for the most part, all sold out. Now, what that means is that we've created a significant amount of demand in places like Europe, in places like Asia, Australia, the Middle East. And the issue that we have as a company is we feel like that over the past five or six years, we have not been doing a good job meeting the demand of what our, our customer base is in these markets. So in order to take care of that, what we decided uh, early last year is that we were going to add um, shows into these markets, which we've already announced. We're going to add six shows in Asia and six shows in Europe. Um, in order to meet that demand, okay? Now, that's important for us because we feel like in order to grow the sport and find new talent, we have to have this level of consistency in these markets. Um, there are some markets that we've been to in the past and been very successful, like Abu Dhabi in the Middle East, Dublin, Ireland, and it takes us literally three or four years to get back to those markets, leaving this demand unfulfilled. unfulfilled. So that's really the reason for expanding the number of events. Um, in addition to that, if you think about the fan base in those markets, um, even if you think about tonight, obviously tonight's kind of the pinnacle of, of all the big events that we've done so far, um, the main event probably won't go off until about 9 o'clock Las Vegas time, which is, what, roughly about 3 or, three or 4 o'clock in the UK. I mean, you have to be a pretty hardcore fan to stay up that late or wake up that early to watch that fight. So what we need to do in order to grow this sport and grow our brand is bring great fights in prime time into these markets so we can make those fights on big networks in those markets in their prime time. Now, as we have decided to do that, and that is moving forward for 2014 and beyond, now we have to figure out how do we distribute these products in the United States, in Canada, in this time zone. What we've decided to do is we are launching UFC Fight Pass. Um, all of these fights will be available, the first one, which we'll talk about in more detail, on January 4th, the fight from Singapore will be available on this service, as well as our fight library, which includes not just UFC, but all of the other brands um, that we have in our fight library, including Pride, Strike Force. WEC, and so on, as well as a number of other original programming um, features that we will be developing on this platform that will be bringing behind the scenes to our fan base like no other sport has ever done before. Access like you would never get from any other uh, sports league or sports team for that matter. Now, we've worked uh, very quickly We've worked uh, very closely with New Lion Technology to develop this. Um, and what I want to do now is I'm going to give you a little bit of a flavor of what UFC Fight Pass will offer. And then obviously we'll go through um, the detail, uh, more details. And uh, you'll get a chance to actually look at the service. Um, I think we have it set up in this room. You guys can play around with it and see how the functionality works. But if we could roll the video now, that would be great. Online 
Fighters offering ultimate access to the world's fastest growing sport. The UFC Fight Pass is the exclusive home to a slate of live UFC events, showcasing top 10 contenders in big time fights, over 150 individual live bouts in the first year alone that cannot be seen anywhere else. UFC Fight Pass also features exclusive original programming like the International Ultimate Fighter Series from Brazil, Canada, Australia, China, and more. You'll also get in-depth interviews with the sport's biggest stars, up-to-the-minute reports from live events around the globe, and special features available only on UFC Fight Pass. Plus, get unlimited access to the most extensive library of MMA content on Earth. Including fights from the UFC's Dark Ages. And the greatest bouts from other MMA promotions, including over 500 pride fights. More than 600 WEC bouts. 500 plus strike force fights. As well as the best of affliction, WFA, and more. There's only one way to ensure that you never miss a UFC fight. Get your UFC Fight Pass to watch your favorite fights wherever you are, whenever you want. is the octagon control every UFC fan dreams of. Go to UFC.tv for your free trial. UFC Fight Pass. Anywhere, anytime. There you go. Um, Danny, you want to give him a little bit more sure. flavor of what we're doing here? So I'll just, I'll just fill you in. I'll just reiterate what, what you just saw. So this thing, like Lorenzo said, kicks off January 4th. Um, over 150 live fights exclusively exclusively here you can't see these fights anywhere else that are coming up uh next year 150 live fights over 3,000 individual library fights over 500 hours of original programming including the international tough so the people from around the world the only place you'll be able to watch chael versus vanderlei from brazil is on this channel okay the only place you'll be able to see it unless you live in brazil there, uh, you can watch it. But everybody around the world will be able to watch it here. And obviously, the, the, the question I get asked the most is, when are you coming out with the Dark Ages DVDs? Well, there you go. There's all, all, you can watch all those fights. That entire library lives here. Um, over 500 Pride fights, over 600 WEC fights, over 500 Strike Force fights, and then all the fights from uh, Affliction and WFA. So you have access to everything. The biggest, not only the biggest fight library in MMA in the world, but the key to this whole thing is being able to get all these other original live fights only here and the, uh, the stuff from Tough from around the world. So I'm going to turn it over. This is kind of, you guys all know Marshall Zelaznik. This is his baby. Uh, this is what he's been working on, and uh, he'll fill you in more. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, it's really exciting. As many of you know, I headed up the international business for some time, but recently transitioned into the chief content officer role. And as we started to evolve that role, it became very clear that the dream that Lorenzo and Dana or the vision had was that we as a company had to evolve with the technology. And, and as I dug in and I got to uh, work with Edward Muncy, who heads up our technology group, we had this amazing machine that we worked with New Lion on that was really untapped. Um, if any of you had been on UFC.TV before, you would have seen free content, you would have seen transactional content. So we basically had this thoroughbred there that we thought there might be a better way to utilize this. So with the convergence of the international strategy to deliver the primetime live events, with all the content that we uh, had been created over the years, had acquired over the years, it seemed the perfect time to get this product launched. Uh, so you know, UFC Fight Pass will live under the UFC.TV umbrella. Um, it will be a subscription service. We do have a free trial that will take you up until March 1st for everyone to go into the service and play with it. 
Uh, the service is live and up and running now, so uh, we encourage everyone to um, log in. We do have four computers in the back for the press to uh, take a tour through it. I think you'll be impressed with the, the girth of the content. Uh, the price is $9.99 starting March 1st. And one of the things that we're most proud of is that this is a real convergence of all of our great content and great technology. Um, with all the streaming movie services out there and the way our consumers consume content, we think this is the best way to deliver content. We're initially launching the service um, in the US, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. But over time, we will launch this worldwide. We'll, think, we'll figure out the distributed. And the beauty with the UFC, as opposed to any of the other sports properties out there, is our fights have shelf life. If you've been a boxing fan, how many times can you watch Ali Frazier? The same is true with the UFC. Our content has shelf life. It drives big ratings everywhere around the world, whether it's live or whether it's taped. And what this service will do, it will allow fans to take their own personal journey with a fighter or with the sport. We'll have years and years of content. You'll be able to track fighters' progress through their career. And we're very proud of the curation that you'll see because there is so much content. Um, we've put a team together um, with Dana's help, with Lorenzo, with Joe Silva's help, and with other people within the company. We have curated the content in a way that we think it'll be user-friendly and allow people to embark on that journey. So uh, we'll open it now up to questions for everybody. And um, just wait until you have a microphone in your hand, and we'll take your questions. A uh, question about how this uh, related to the ongoing relationship with Fox. Was there any conversation that had to be had with them in terms of the fact that now a large amount of content, especially live content, would be hosted on the digital platform? No, you know, we've had, um, obviously, UFC.TV for a while now where we've streamed content, streamed our, our pay-per-views for a long time, so obviously they were aware of that. Um, these fights are outside of the package that they purchased two years ago. So, um, no, I mean, there's really, it was, it's a completely separate offering, something we've been focused on for a long time. Understanding and knowing that, you know, uh, content is moving um, over the top in a lot of different ways. And, you know, we saw the success that a lot of the different services were having. And essentially what we created here is Netflix for the fight fan. And Lorenzo, you also talked about the fact that because of these international events, you felt like you might be under-servicing those primary markets. It stands to reason that hardcores are going to follow the UFC wherever it goes. Was there any market research that told you guys that there could be any limited downside domestically as far as what you might lose from people who might watch a Fox Sports 1 or Fox Sports 2 event as opposed to the digital platform? No, I don't, you know, look, at the end of the day, um, we have product and we're distributing it in, in various different ways. And we have essentially three tiers of products. So we have on our, the bottom end of the pyramid, we have the ultimate fighter. Really, we uh, obviously expose new talent, young kids that haven't been in the UFC yet. Um, on the top end is a fight like tonight, you know, a premium uh, fight that here in the U.S. distributed on pay-per-view. And then in the middle, we have night brand okay been very successful that's distributed on Fox Sports 1 or on the Fox broadcast network but it's also distributed around the world on various different networks essentially what we're doing is taking those that that brand and extending it into these different international markets because once again the demand is there we feel like we're not meeting that demand in addition to that there's a lot of great young talent that we just haven't been able to get to. We haven't been able to expose to give these young, young fighters uh, the opportunity to really kind of prove what they have. So once again, in, in an effort to build a global sport and extend our brand, we felt like this was the best way to do that. I don't feel like we're going to lose any fans uh, here in the U.S. I think what we're going to have is we're going to have a lot of you know, fans that are very engaged that are going to want to see what happens in some of these fights, maybe see if they can uh, find out who the next John Jones or Johnny Hendricks is going to be. Maybe they emanate from Asia. Maybe they're going to emanate from somewhere in Europe. And um, we're going to have a very, very robust offering for the live events that are going to be uh, shown exclusively. And Dana can talk about that. And the reality is this. There's only, there's only, we have a ton of programming. As we continue to go, go global, we have a ton of programming. And there's only... They only have so much space on Big Fox, Fox Sports 1. Um, we, we couldn't possibly get this content out to the fans. And listen, just like me and most of you guys that are in here and most of the people that will that, be watching this and hearing this, I'm a huge fight fan. I love to watch fights. And you can watch the fights from, from all over the world now. No matter where we are, 
you know, if, if like Lorenzo was saying, as we go local and these fights are happening and it'll be, you know, early in the morning here or in the middle of the day here, depending on the time difference, you can go straight to this, to this, uh, th this fight pass and watch the fights whenever you want to. It's huge. It's awesome. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, uh, nobody's ever done this ever again. Like I said, every year we raise the bar. Nobody's ever been able to do this before. We're, we're going to do it, and it's, uh, I think the fans are going to love it. And one final question. Uh, obviously, some of the top fighters right now on the pay-per-view model can get bonused off of pay-per-view buys. Could either of you see a situation down the line, or has it even been discussed, that someone who, say, potentially headlines one of these online platform cards could be bonused based off of some sort of subscription in the month leading up to that fight, something like that? I, I have no idea. I mean, we, 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 uh, you know, we have our rights deal for television, and we, we, we do the pay-per-views. Um, and guys get bonused on, on, on all fights. So, uh, I, I mean, th this is no different. This is, uh, this is, th th these fights aren't like part of, so this is all UFC. This is all the same. I mean, it's, th there's not going to be different fights than there are for the other fights. We're putting on UFC fights all over the world. Understand that. These fights aren't different than any other fights we're doing they're, other than they're in the, uh, the right time in, in, in these people's markets, wherever we end up. It's like Lorenzo was saying. We put a fight on. In the UK, these guys are watching these fights at 3, 4 in the morning. We're going to put on a fight Saturday night at 6 o'clock in London or Manchester or wherever we might be or in China. And now it's just the people around the rest of the world have this fight pass and they can watch the fights. These aren't different fights. These, these are the same fights that we put on. They'll be the same caliber, a, 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 a level of, of, of fighters. Nothing is, nothing is different. This isn't some, some freak show or some other different thing we're working on here. Well, Dana, I guess building off of that, I mean, next week's card in Singapore has taken a little bit of heat as maybe not being the That's weird. Card, That's right? weird. One of our cards is taking heat. <laughs> I don't care about that. Judge the card when it's over. It's so crazy. This is, this is so insane that I'm still, that we're still having these, these, these questions. 2013 was probably the best year we've ever had, you know, and that fight is sick. If you know anything about fighting, the fight is awesome. If you don't, then blab away. Well, I mean, do you think it's indicative of what we're going to see in the future? I mean, there are a lot of names that maybe people haven't heard of before, you know, kind of new talent to the UFC. I mean, do you think that's what we can expect from future cards on the network, or is this just a particular scenario to, to Singapore? There's going to be, there's going to be big fights on this, on the, on the and there's going to be fights with up and coming talent. Uh, y you know, nobody know who, who knew who John Jones was a few years ago. Nobody, nobody knew who Anderson Silva was. Where do you think these guys came from? You know, you, you think every card is going to be headlined with, with uh, you know, huge superstars. Guys have to fight to become huge superstars. That whole, that whole thing makes no sense to me. It's a UFC fight night product, you know. Look, at the end of the day, what we tried to do on our fight nights is make sure that they're headlined by uh, two individuals that are ranked in the top ten so that there's true meaning behind, you know, the outcome of the event. Now, does that happen every single time we do a fight night on Fox? Um, or historically when we did them on fuel. No, but it's a guideline. It's what we try to do. Um, and that's going to be no different than we're doing here on the Fight Pass Network. And, you know, when you look at the, the fight uh, upcoming in Singapore, I mean, it's interesting. Safadine, who is making his debut, he's a former Strike Force champion, fighting a young kid from uh, Korea that hasn't lost, I think, in five years and finished his last seven guys. And he's a huge guy for that weight class. Believe that fight me, sucks. It's going to be a, a very, very interesting fight. Now, fast forward to the next fight. Pretty good card. Alexander Gustafsson against um, Jimmy Manawa, you know. And then we have uh, Pearson and uh, 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 Melvin uh, on the undercard. Pretty good fight night card. So I think, you know, that's kind of the flavor of what you're going to see on this, on this product. And one other, if I could, you know, Dana, you mentioned the other day that, you know, the economy is not coming back. It is tough, you know. So this is kind of adding to the cost of being to a UFC fan. Is there any way that the offset in this type of income could ever see a change to the pay-per-view model? Or maybe, you know, is it just going to be, you know, it's an addition? Or could we ever see a change to that model based on, on this new network? That's, that's the sport. That's the way this sport is built and designed. It's funny because I see, you know, I, I've seen people chirping like, oh, now we got to get this. And the NFL doesn't do this. Uh, the NFL gets $9 billion for television. When Fox pays us $9 billion for our rights deal, we won't do pay-per-view. I promise. <laughs>
So congratulations on getting the library out there. That's a hu really huge deal. Um, one question about that, are you going to have shoulder programming as well on it, like the countdown shows for the old events? There will be. All the programming you're used to seeing supporting our pay-per-views, you'll see. You also, if you've been a fan of the DVD collection, we're looking at getting the DVD extras up on the service. Um, and then Lorenzo mentioned some of the original content that um, Craig Borsari and the production team will produce. Um, it'll be a very vibrant experience. Yeah, we're beefing up our digital production staff quite significantly to make sure that from a fight fan's perception that you'll uh, be getting, you know, up to the minute information behind the scenes. I mean, some of the stuff that Dana has done on his vlogs, video blogs, is I think very, very cool for the fight fan where you're literally getting access and seeing fighters, you know, interact with the doctors, interact with each other behind the scenes. I think what you'll see is a lot of product being streamed up onto this um, platform in more of a real time manner. So as a fight fan, you can really kind of be behind the scenes. And once again, you know, delivering content in a way that no other league um, has ever out. We want to be as open and give as much access to the fans as we can. Aside from the fights that you mentioned, are you going to be producing additional content for the network? Like, say, a Legends House or something where guys sit around and talk about the old days? I mean, anything's possible, yeah. We, 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 want, to, we want to put together a, a lot of content. Obviously, content that fans want and that they want to see. And, and like Lorenzo said, like my video blogs, there'll, there'll be more of them now and they'll be more real-time. Uh, it's going to be, uh, like I said, if you're, if you're a fight and, and you like the sport, this thing's a home run, you're going to love it. Marshall, I don't know if uh, this would be for you or for these guys, but have you gotten any placement from like the smart TV manufacturers or the set-top box manufacturers so that, you know, you're near the top of the thing as opposed to 28 down where it's harder to find, you know, the different service? Yeah, so when being the use, the user. <laughs> When, when we launch, this will be basically URL-based, but within, by mid-January, we'll have iOS, and we will have um, um, Android. And we are in discussions now with the Rokus of the world, the Apple TVs. All of those groups already have the existing UFC.TV app, and there will be a very thorough discussion and negotiation that comes along with the Fight Pass service that gets us into those places. We think it's a premier product. It needs to be treated premier. We're speaking to all of our cable operators. There's a whole shift occurring now, even in the, in the pay TV world, where they're looking at app-based services. And then Netflix, I think Netflix is shaking a lot of people up, and we're going to you know, ride a lot of that stream into the distribution for this. And I just wanted to clarify something. I know you're launching with the English-speaking countries. Um, listening to Dana talk earlier, you were talking about the fights being you know, available on this service as opposed to in the different countries. But what about countries where they're not English-speaking, where maybe, you know, are, are, you, are they going to lose this content now, or is it going to stay on their TV network in that particular country until it comes on and the service becomes available? We, we are distributing the, we'll call them the international fight nights, for lack of a better phrase now. Those will be distributed on television networks throughout the region where they're, bro they're broadcast or where they emanate from, as well as other parts of the world. But this service will sit alongside that. Even if we have a TV deal in, let's say, Korea, where you might get an event, Fight Pass will ultimately be in Korea, and you'll see it simultaneously through Fight Pass as well. Well, I guess here's what I'm saying, Marshall. Let's say, you know, you have the event coming up in Singapore. Uh, for the lack of a better, you know, I'll use France as an example. If somebody can watch UFC content in France right now, are they going to be able to watch it once this Fight Pass comes out in their language on their TV until the Fight Pass comes there? Yes, when we launch the product in these foreign territories, we are intending to get the local language as part of it. So I, I think, I hope that answers your question. But once, once the product is available on Fight Pass, it may be simultaneous with the television broadcaster, or it may be exclusive on Fight Pass, depending on how the rights deal goes with the... Marshall, over here. On, uh, on UFC.TV now, you can order the pay-per-views. Uh, now that this is replacing it, can you still order the pay-per-views? You can. The pay-per-views will sit under the .TV umbrella. You'll see options to buy the pay-per-views, and you'll be able to uh, transact on Fight Pass as well. So if you pay, come March 1st, if you pay $9.99, you're getting access to those, uh, those fights, the library, all that stuff. But if you want the pay-per-view even later, you'll pay for that, right? That's that, extra? That's right. And let's say Singapore, you, uh, you wake up in the middle of the event. Can you start from the beginning, or is it airing live? It'll be real-time encoded, so if, you don't, if you're not there, 
but you'll come in, you'll start it anywhere you want. You can come in at the live moment or go back to the beginning. And then what happens um, right after the event? Is it up on demand immediately after? Immediately after, it'll be there and it'll remain on the server for the life of the product for sure. And then you said March 1st uh, for every, that, that's when you'll have to start uh, paying for it. The first two months are free for the world, for those four, um, those four territories, right? That's right. Come March 1st, Europe as well, or is it still just for those? Our, we're, right now, we're, we have a timeline there. We're hoping that March 1st we'll be launching in Europe. Um, so yeah, from, come March 1st will be the first pay moment for anybody. And then for the, uh, the older events, all those fights, will it be the entire event that is available or just the fights? You know, some people like to watch uh, the intros and things like that. It, it, will it be categorized like that? It will be. There will be a process where you'll have full events and as we continue to work on the library and pulling out individual fights, you'll be able to sort it by individual fights. You'll be able to watch the entire event. One more. Um, will LeadXC be involved in this? Can you they, watch those? They will be. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Marshall. Uh, I think one of the great selling points of the Dark Ages fights, were there any problems digging some of them up? You know, it was like UFC 26 onto someone's desk in a warehouse somewhere? You had to go into Dana's vault and try and pull it out of there. No, they, they're there. We have a great digital service. All this product is there, and it's just a matter of migrating it from one server to the, to the other. Right, right. There's so, some fights, too, in this thing. There's some fights that I buried that would... Uh, yeah. I know what you're thinking. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's some fights that I buried because, uh, like, some of the bloodiest fights we've ever had. You know, they were bad, and I was just like, I don't even want to see th those. Will be in there too. Everything, the whole library will be in there. Uh, question for Lorenzo. Uh, I think I know for the fans what it means to not have to stay up till four in the morning and watch a fight. But you know, your partners over in Europe and everywhere else, what's been their reaction when you told them, "Hey, we're putting shows on in prime time from here on out." It's been a huge positive. You know, it's one of those things where sometimes you have to just go out there and say you're going to do something. And we said, look, we're coming. We're doing live fights in your territory, um, uh, in your prime time. And all of a sudden, we had networks calling us that had never shown interest before, right? So now we're in discussions with major free-to-air broadcasters throughout Europe, throughout Asia, throughout different parts of the world that are saying, hey, we want to jump on this thing because now all of a sudden they have a time slot on a Saturday night. They can attract young males, which means they can attract bigger ratings, which means they can attract advertisers. It just changes the whole game for us and for the uh, really for the whole industry of mixed martial arts. We're going to do in those markets, in those territories, similar to what we did here with once we get that exposure, you get the ratings, you bring in the advertisers, and then you start to build the business from there. But we had to start somewhere. You know, I've been, uh, you know, we've been bantering this around for the last three or four years saying, look, we have to figure out a way to get live events in these markets. We have to do more fights because the demand's there. And historically, we had been kind of hesitant to pull the trigger. Honestly, the revenues aren't there, right? That's why you know, we haven't seen that many fights in some of these territories, not because we want to, don't want to do them, but we're trying to run a business. Um, but we went ahead, we made the decision, once we figured out that we had the technology, we could stream these fights to the US, generate at least some revenue, but by moving forward into these markets and making the commitments, advertisers are coming on board, networks are coming on board, and it's all starting to happen. We'll take a couple more questions. We're cognizant of the prelims starting. and want to make sure you all have an opportunity to get out. Dana, you mentioned fights that you buried. Uh, was that Frank Shamrock that we saw on the... It was. <laughs> How did you come to that? Why'd you finally relent to put him on... Well, it's not things? that I'm, I, I, I relented. Uh, you know, you, if you're going to pay for the fight, you get every fight that's in our library. Like I said, more than, more than any Shamrock or fights like that, it was those real bloody ones. We had that Jay Haran one that was real bad, and, and there was a couple other ones. Th those will be on there too. So everything, every fight that we've ever done and every fight that we own in our library will be on the service. Is this a pre uh, preparation for a day when you see maybe 10 years down the road when pay-per-view might not be as worthwhile as it is right now and you guys will be in control at that point? I, I don't think that, that's, that's our thought process. What, what we're doing is as we go into these other markets, like Lorenzo said, I, we, we, we love to give the fans as much as we can possibly give, and uh, we like taking, raising the bar and taking things to the next level, and we, we want to make sure that all these fights that happen in these new territories, if you're a fight fan, you're able to watch them. Uh, Marshall, I know you already asked about the, the apps coming up, but uh, there's already a relationship with Xbox and the UFC app where you can purchase the upcoming pay-per-view events on that app. For the January 4th launch date, will you be able to purchase Fight Pass through the Xbox app? Won't be. Um, we're hoping within about 60 days that it'll be available through Xbox. 
you will be able through iOS. Well, let me think about that. You won't. It'll just be URL-based uh, for the Singapore event. And then uh, with the libraries, is the IFL library as well going to be included in that? It's not included in that. We don't, we don't control that library. Thought you did. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll be available at the post-fight press conference as well if you have any other questions. Thank you for your attention. Enjoy the fights today. Have fun at the fights tonight, everybody. Thank you.